country. But right now, uh, we're turning to the Ten Commandments of Valuing Art. Hmm. There's a big appraisal event coming up here in Halifax on the 9th. That is coming up on uh, next Monday. And uh, joining us here on the program, we've reached out to Rob Cowley. And uh, thank you very much for, for joining us today, Rob. Tell me a little bit about the event coming up in uh, the 9th. Thanks, Sheldon. Yeah, um, we're holding... I'm with Consigner Canadian Fine Art, a firm in Toronto. And we run online auctions of fine Canadian art at consigner.ca. Um, so this coming Monday, the 9th, we're going to be hold, holding a um, an auction valuation day. Uh, it is open to the public. It's free of charge. It's a comp- complimentary and confidential consultation with one of our specialists. We're going to be at the uh, Halifax Delta Barrington between 10 and 5 this coming Monday. And people can bring in their works of art, up to three items they can bring in. And we're happy to take a look and provide our thoughts with regard to uh, value at auction yeah. for, the, for those pieces. Very much like what uh, we would say, air quotes here, like the Antiques Roadshow, where people will bring an item and they're, they're trying to get a, a sense of its value. Do you give them an, a sense of the value for auction or for appraisal or for insurance? What exactly is the number they're going to get? Well, it's, it's a verbal valuation for auction purposes. Um, any other type of appraisal you get into usually have to be a bit more formal, usually require a bit more research as well, and tend to be written appraisals at that point. So what they receive from us free of charge is um, is a valuation, a verbal valuation for auction purposes. All right. So it's kind of a, a rough guesstimate. Is that the best way to put it? It's a guesstimate. It is. It is but with auction. Everything that is valued at auction um, within the, the Ten Commandments that we'll discuss. It is based on the past performance of similar work, um, usually by the same artist uh, within the auction market. So while it is a guesstimate um, in, in one sense, it really is based uh, based on the market. Um, and again, we say three items because that allows us enough time to provide, you know, to, to even do some research on the spot as well. But you're absolutely right. A verbal valuation doesn't carry the same weight that a formal written appraisal would, uh, which you know. Takes more time. Well, that said, uh, I'm sure there are things hanging on walls or sitting on shelves or perhaps, uh, you know, in a drawer somewhere, a closet or an attic <laughs> that, that people have. And uh, how often do you actually find a quote unquote diamond in the rough or some, some rare piece of uh, artwork that has just, uh, you know, been dying to be shown? It does happen. Um, obviously, it's more of a, it becomes more of a challenge uh, each year with competition, but also with the internet, where people can can many times look up the name that's written as you know that's printed on a painting or a print or a watercolor. Um, however, it still does happen. Uh, we held an appraisal day in our gallery um, last spring, actually, and a client brought in about four or five paintings. And the first four, which he thought were valuable, were just kind of copies of, uh, of old master paintings. It didn't carry much value at auction. Uh, the fifth painting was almost a throwaway for him. He just kind of said, well, what about this? And it's funny, my colleague and I almost thought it was, you know, we couldn't believe uh, that, that, you know, that, that the situation was unfolding. It was actually a painting by William Kurlek, um, who is a Western Canadian artist, a Prairies artist, and lived in Toronto as well. He has a very, very strong market at auction. Over the past 10 to 15 years, his market has exploded at auction. And so it was a little painting, only 10 by 5. Um, they thought that it would have a little bit of value. Um, the estimate we gave them was fifteen to $20,000 for the painting. Wow. And in the end, and so, um, and uh, once we started talking about the painting, we included it in our, our fall auction in November. It turned out there was this incredible story attached to it as well, which also contributed to the valuation and to the interest. Um, the the client's parents had actually, by chance, met Kurlak at a neighbor's house, who was a photographer, and they brought over some baked goods for, to their neighbor as a gift. Kurlak tried one of the um, uh, pieces of strudel, and commented that it was uh, better than his mother even used to make. <laughs> Kurlek was Ukrainian, so was the, the family, in fact, who had the painting. And so they went back to the house and brought him back an entire basket of strudel. Mm-hmm. And so about a couple of weeks later, Kurlek returned, uh, came to their door, and handed them the painting um, in uh, just in thanks for the fantastic strudel. And so it hung in the family's home for many years. They didn't really, you know, look into the value or discuss the value. It was just, just attached to a memory for them. Yeah, absolutely. And so we offered it fifteen to twenty thousand. It sold for forty one thousand dollars in November. Uh, d- what was the image of? I- I'm just kind of curious what someone would think is. Ah, you know, I don't really know. I don't recognize it. I don't know the place. I don't know the people. Yeah, well, it, it was a child in the snow, and actually, our website at consigner.ca, you can actually see it. Um, it was a child in the snow who had just, and it was called Ukrainian proverb. And the proverb was that, um, and it actually is printed at the bottom of the painting, is that he who tries to catch two rabbits will catch neither. 
So it's a child kind of sprawled in the snow, and uh, you see two rabbits escaping from him, and his net is empty. Huh. And and it was, so it was a ch- and that's very much um, one of the one of the commandments of valuation is subject matter. Kurlek is best known and most celebrated for his uh, his scenes of uh, winter on the prairies, especially as a child, which harkened back to his life. And so the subject was exactly what people were looking for. It had this incredible story attached to it as well. The frame was made by Kurlek, that's our Nate frame as well, which he was also known for. It really did have all of the factors that we're always looking for. And so in the end, it doubled its estimate and sold for just over $40,000. Wow. So subject matter, uh, is that one of the Ten Commandments? It is indeed. Um, artist is most important. We start with artist, of course, and mm-hmm. from there, you know, it gets a, uh, you move into, into kind of subcategories. But artist, um, subject matter, is, is, as we just discussed. The medium, um, a print, if it's not a printmaker, tends to be worth less than an original work. A larger work as well tends to carry more value than a smaller work. However, we're finding now with people downsizing, very large works can sometimes have, have a little bit of hindrance in terms of value as well, because oversized works can be tough to find a market for, because, mm. of course, people's spaces are getting smaller and smaller. Um, the history, the ownership history of the painting, if it's been in exhibitions, uh, the period of the painting, if you're looking at a stronger period for an artist uh, in, in one period versus another, the Group of Seven, for instance, their works of art are worth more during their association in the 1920s than, than the value of their works after they had uh, disbanded. Um, the condition of the painting is very important. The rarity of the painting. And then if it's in fashion as well, William, the William Kerlach painting, again, collect, there's been a lot of collectors looking for his work recently, so that played a factor as well. And then you pull it all together with connoisseurship, which really is just the, uh, it comes back to the experience of the appraiser, kind of pulling everything together, their experience with a particular artist or a particular movement, and, um, and being able to, uh, to, to, to find some direction with value uh, starting there as well. Well, I, I've been across the country, and I, I, you know, in Saskatchewan, if it's 100 years old, that's old. Uh, does yeah. consigner Canadian fine art like coming down here to the Maritimes, where we have, you know, at least uh, 250 years of history? Oh, absolutely, we do. We find works quite often. Um, obviously, we find a lot of the um, a lot of the artists who who are from the Atlantic provinces, whether it be Maud Lewis or David Blackwood or you know Mary Pratt or Christopher Pratt. But we also do find that there's a lot of um, art collectors that you know in in, uh, in, uh, in the Atlantic provinces as well who have you know works by the Group of Seven, who have works by Maurice Cullen, Robert Pilot. So uh, absolutely, we, we do find works um, out east quite often. Uh, what about photographs? Do they tend to uh, pop up every once in a while? I'm thinking like of, of, of master portraiture from a karsh, because uh, we've all heard the story. Mm-hmm. Some someone finds a karsh at a, a value village and uh, scoops it up and finds out it's worth like Car- money. Money. Oh, karsh. Money. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah, absolutely. Karsh's work does carry value at auction. Um, it. it uh, I mean, subject matter is a perfect example with karsh because. He, there, there are so many, um, so, so many photographs out there, so many portraits that, that he did create. However, it tends to be those very famous photographs that command values in the thousands, those being Winston Churchill, Robert Kennedy, um, Einstein. Uh, essentially, the, um, the, the fame of the figure um, affects the value of, of, the, of, the, uh, of the photograph itself. But they can sell in the, in the mid-thousands of dollars. And, and Karsh is, is interesting as well, a Canadian artist, but he trades internationally as well, which is a rarity with, uh, with, with Canadian artists. Normally, they just trade within our borders. All right. Uh, do, do people have to sign up ahead of time, or do they just show up on Monday? Yes, yeah, always best to, to book an appointment. While while we are, we will do our best to certainly serve anyone who uh, who walks in. Uh, the last thing we want is a client having to wait because these, these events tend to be very popular. Um, they can call us toll free at one eight six six nine three one. Eight four one five. You can also email us at info at consigner.ca. And again, our site is, is www.consigner.ca. You can sign up with us there. And it's always best to have an appointment to know exactly wh- wh- when we'll see you. And uh, we're booking about 15 to 20 minute appointments right now. All right, Rob, uh, if you find something really exciting, uh, <laughs> do you tell the people to keep it quiet until they uh, f- either decide to put it up for auction or take it back home and store it away? Well, if, 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 um, uh, part of this as well is that if, if we do encounter works that would be suitable for our upcoming auctions, we have a March auction that's actually going to be open between the 16th and the 23rd, but then we have a larger May auction. Um, we are taking works with us as well. So if, if the client wants to proceed with a consignment, we'll certainly take it on consignment then. Uh, the Kurlek was a good example, actually. Um, we, we didn't go heavily in terms of promoting the artwork until we were a couple of months before the auction um, to, to, to really capitalize on, uh, on as much interest as possible, and the story was picked up uh, nationally. Uh, leading to the auctions. The timing worked out very well.